Australia-wide national awards event. Seven city hotel venues, 21 cameras, all on vMix, eight instances of vMix. Hi, I'm Simon Byrne. I'm an experienced online event producer based out of Canberra. I run two businesses, the first of which is StreamOut, this is my streaming business, and Think Project Design, which is my corporate event production management business. Those of you who have watched my other videos would know that I run a virtual studio out of my house. From this studio, I routinely produce events where I pull in remote venues and contributors and package them up to stream them as well as route various returns for audiences in remote venues. One of the more complex events that I do is the Master Electricians of Australia's National Awards. The Master Electricians are the peak body for electricians in Australia, and rather than run seven separate state award events, followed by another national awards event, they run them simultaneously right across the country. They do the state awards first, and then we bring them together and do the national awards. Go Live Australia hired me for this event. Go Live is Australia's leading nationwide live streaming group and they have a presence or partners in all of our capital cities. They deployed crews in Brisbane, which in this case was the anchor city, as well as Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth, Townsville and Hobart. All of those venues were a hotel or convention centre with live audiences. Each was covered by three cameras going into a local copy of vMix. Then using vMix Call, we set up two-way 1080p 4 megabit calls between them and my control room. As Brisbane was the anchor city, the PowerPoint slides were driven from there as well, and that feed was planned to be sent using SRT, but the guys in Brisbane had problems making that work, so we just spun up another vMix Call, which had an isolated feed of the slides. One of the key features of the event is interactivity. The client really wanted to pull the country together, so interactivity between all of the cities was critical and it needed to be flexible. This meant that every city needed to be able to interact with any other city. Audio issues aside, having the ability for any of the seven cities being able to talk to the other six cities meant that there were 42 possible combinations. So I could have created 42 inputs with every combination. However, 42 inputs would be taxing on my vMix machine because it means you have to have the inputs of seven cities plus the 42 two-way combinations plus another seven city slide views plus VTs and a few others. That meant that there would be over 60 inputs to manage it would potentially overload the vision switching operator, let alone make the vMix rig really sluggish. There is another issue too, which is managing latency in such a way that's acceptable. vMix round trip latency is too slow for image magnification on house projection screens on its own, let alone when the content comes back from a remote control room. Ideally, if, say, Brisbane was talking to Sydney, on Brisbane's screen, we'd see Sydney. On Sydney's screen, we'd see Brisbane. And on the stream, we'd see both. Now that means I need different outputs for each city. vMix only has four outputs, but I have seven cities plus a stream. Even if I had eight outputs, it would be very taxing on vMix to render all of them. So I need a smarter solution rather than the mythical 60 plus input, eight output resource intensive vMix rig. The answer is in scripting, dynamic inputs and Joda Max's excellent central control software. Central control is powerful software that pulls together various mainly MIDI controllers and lets you map them in applications. I sometimes use up to 11 devices in central control that are connected to my vMix system. It gives me the ability to have dedicated controllers, plus if I have a second operator, as I do on this job, I can spread the load between us. You've probably seen matrix crosspoint switching where every device is laid out on the x-axis as well as the y-axis. Dante Manager is an example of this. You simply select where the two axes intersect to make a connection. 
So if I build my own version and we have every city across the x-axis, as well as the y-axis, I can select any pair of cities instantly and then put them to line. So that is what I did. Using a Novation Launchpad Mini, I created a cross-point configurator that would load the cities into layers on pre-configured inputs. I had a two-way view, I had a slide view with a pip, and a three-way view which had Brisbane and any two other cities, so a three-way conversation were also planned for. If I had created separate inputs for every combination, that would be about 85 inputs. But with this system, it's just three. The one disadvantage with this system is I cannot preview an upcoming combination. So I created a second crosspoint controller with another three inputs in vMix. Therefore, I had a controller called Alpha with corresponding inputs in vMix, as well as Bravo, which also had matching inputs in vMix. So how does it work? It uses vMix's scripting combined with dynamic inputs. Dynamic inputs are a temporary way to assign an input. For example, if we look at this function, function equals set dynamic input one to the value of seven. This makes dynamic input one equals seven, which in this case is the city of Perth. Sleep 10. This is just a pause for 10 milliseconds. I put them in there to debounce switches, basically. Then we have another function on the same button, function equals set dynamic input two to the value of five. This makes dynamic input two equal five, which in this case is the city of Melbourne. Now we need to load those dynamic inputs into the layers of the actual multi-view inputs in vMix. So on another button, we have function equals set layer, and the input, is 2MV alpha, which is just what I've called this particular input. And the value, in this case the layer, is layer 3, and we want it to be set as whatever is in dynamic input 1. So the above function has set layer 3 on input 2MV alpha to whatever was loaded in dynamic input 1, which in this case was actual input 7, or Perth. Another brief pause, and then another set layer function. So function set layer, and the input is once again the same input, 2MV alpha. But this time we're changing layer two to dynamic input two. So this function has set layer two on the input 2MV alpha to whatever was loaded into dynamic input two, which in this case was input five or Melbourne. So now when I preview the input 2MV alpha, it will have input 7 on layer 3 and input 5 on layer 2. Briefly, on the same button, I do the same for all the other alpha views at the same time. For the slide view with the pip, function set layer on input equals SL alpha, so the input's called SL alpha. On layer three, we're putting whatever is in dynamic input one, and that would be Perth in the pip. And on the same button, we'd do the same for the three-way view with Brisbane. Function set layer, in this case, the input's called 3MV crowd alpha. The value, layer three, put whatever's in dynamic two, and the same on the same input for 3MV crowd alpha value two, layer two, put whatever's in dynamic input. Therefore, Brisbane is permanently in the first box and we've loaded Perth and Melbourne into the other boxes. So the alpha views are ready to go, but we're gonna just concentrate on the 2MV. In my case, 2MV starts for two-way multi-view. Now I want to send the 2MV on the stream but I don't want to send it to their respective cities because they'll notice the latency, which will be more than half a second. I want the 2MV on the stream. I want Perth to see Melbourne on their screens, and I want Melbourne to see Perth on their screens. So we have three outputs, the stream, an output for Perth, and an output for Melbourne. Using triggers on transition in, 
I run the following script. Function equals set output three. So we're setting output three to the value input and whatever is in dynamic one at the time. So therefore I'm setting output three to show whatever is in dynamic input one, which in this case was input seven or Perth. So now we have Perth on output three. The next step is to route that to Melbourne. And I do that by changing Melbourne's call source to output three using this function. Function equals video call video source and the input is dynamic two, and we know that that currently is Melbourne, and change that to output three. Therefore, I'm switching whatever is in dynamic two's input, video call source to output three. So input five, or Melbourne's return video, is now output three, which is now showing Perth only. And then we do the same for the other city. Set function equals set output four to an input, and the input is dynamic two. So whatever is in dynamic two is now on output four. In this case, five or Melbourne. And then we change the call source for the other city. Function equals video call source and the input is dynamic input one and the value is output four. So I'm switching whatever is in dynamic input one's video call source to output four. So input seven or Perth's return video is now output four, which is now showing Melbourne only. And then I have a script for every single input that constantly switches the outputs based on what is currently selected combined with whatever is in the dynamic inputs at the time. Well, that's it. Thanks for soldiering on to the end. Uh, please like and subscribe to uh, my channel if this video content was of value to you and by all means leave a comment down below because I do read them all. My name's Simon Byrne, my businesses are streamout.net.au and thinkprojectdesign, that's thinkpd.com.au. I'm available for freelance work so please reach out if I can be of value to you. Thank you so much.